Now, having spent some time with these Ellies this morning, I think they're, they're comfortable that we're not we're behaving ourselves and we're just here to share some space with them. They were all in some fairly thick bush when we crossed over to Brent and I managed to find a little opening. They've turned towards Treehouse Dam. They're slowly making their way down towards Treehouse Dam. And one of the most remarkable things that I find sometimes with elephants is how they have the whole world to, to, to move their world and all these trees to feed on. And yet, like this one now, she's decided on her own, or well, she's decided to come to us. And something that I try and emphasize a lot is that we can, we can approach them to a certain point where they clearly get uncomfortable. And sometimes that distance is, is well, it's, it varies. The distance varies according to the mood and, and, and the terrain and what they're up to. When they come close to us, that distance changes completely because it's entirely their decision. She could have gone anywhere else but coming to feed on this particular buffalo thorn because they were almost out of view, about 20, 30 yards away. And I can only see it as she's wanting to come and share a bit of space while she feeds. She's showing us her feeding methods. Those thorns would be tearing into our skin right now. The buffalo thorn has a very straight thorn and a hooked thorn. So what was that for? Get a big piece of a branch so that you can chew the bark, no doubt. Yep. Unfortunately, she's broken that other branch in front of us. But now she's twisting it in her mouth. She's taken a good portion of that branch of the, of the buffalo thorn. And she'll turn it and chew on it and chew all the bark off. Can you move this branch, Mrs. Ellie, to this one and move it out of your way, out of our way? I can't see you properly. Please. You can see the tree break uh, moving just behind her, so there's another Ellie just on the other side of, of her.
stuck in the base of that buffalo thorn. She's trying to grip bits of it with her, her trunk to get to the bark. Pushing it further with the foot. She tries, I suppose, split the trunk. And now she'll move it. She's using her tusk to try and move it to the side. At least she's not moving it to this side. And just take the whole tree out. Not often that they will feed on buffalo thorn in this manner, but it could just be that she wants, she needs buffalo thorn bark at this point. There, she's got a piece and she's going to rip oh, a tiny little piece. Doesn't strip off in long strips like it does off of the acacias and off the knob thorns. And a lot of obstructions down there that she's trying to move out of the way. Pressing her tusk with her trunk against the tree. And the sharp point of the tusk trying to pry away the bark given up now. See, when there's only a little bit of bark like that, I'm thinking there must be some property in there that she needs. Because it's certainly not the flavor in the, and, and, and as a food source. I think she more needs whatever it was on that bark for whatever, maybe, I wouldn't say an ailment, but maybe just something that she's lacking right now. Oh, 
a much more forward because I've got this car rump in front of us and I can't I'm hoping that we can get a little bit of a glimpse of this child playing on a on a tree. mama that was hidden from me. You can see her broken touch. She was very close to us earlier, just right through some very dense vegetation, and I couldn't quite see her, but I recognize her tusks now. <laughs> there was a little one making a noise and an adult answering, but not the mother. Older sister. And now the female that's just come to this very little one, rumbling and a bunch of other children all coming together. That was interesting. It's all happening behind the bush. Maybe that's mom. Because now the little one's drinking from it. Well, this, this little one went and then that one answered and she came out of the bush and rumbled after she answered the calf and two other calves came running one to its own mother one to her I guess they are daughters of this old lady matriarch that was just quite interesting and the little one called and the mother answered and came down See that big, there's a bigger calf there that belongs to the older female. known as a weight of a bush. I'm sitting right next to one actually, Gilly. Knobthorn is one of them. You can see uh, this branch here may be silhouetted against the sky. No, that's not silhouetted, but it's good enough. You can see those very sharp hooked thorns. Um, maybe even, oh, that's good enough. What we call decurved thorns. In other words, the thorns curve backwards into the middle of the bush. And when you, if you brush past this, they are such strong thorns that they'll hook your clothing, and it kind of it makes you stop when you're walking. 
and that's why it's called a waiter bit, a vakabiki. When you look at the trunk of the knob thorn, you can see why it's called a knob thorn. Because the thorns themselves, as the as it get thicker and woodier each year that the tree grows, so especially the young knob thorns have these very large knobbly outgrowths where the thorns were, the young thorns. So there, there's still a little bit of a thorn on the top of those knobs. I'll see you in a short while.